Welcome back to HBL. We saw Jab take an early loss in game one of this match, but he's won the last two in a row to get a 2-1 lead over Tides of Time here. Now, going into this match, we said that Jab had a good plan coming in. That he, he told us that he had a good plan coming in, and you're seeing him execute it here and get some wins. Yeah, changing up his strategy to go more in line with mid-range strategies with the way that he's been playing uh, has been working out beautifully for him so far. You know, he's tended to favor killing minions in all of these matchups, even when he's playing mid-range hunter decks. Uh, but, you know, mid-range hunter wants to apply a little bit more pressure than it does anything else. So I'm glad to see him swap it up and go with minion-centric strategies. But game four is getting underway right now. It's match point for Jab. Tides needs two straight to win the series. Yeah, and the pressure is all on Tides. And you know what? We're going to see Hunter out of Jab here in Tides of Time. Bringing a hunter deck himself. Yeah, I mean, this is looks exactly in the vein of uh, that mid, the hybrid hunter that's kind of becoming popular as of late. It has the same early game pressure uh, that a lot of the hunter decks do. You know, still got leopard and stuff in there, but it's going to rely on more tempo plays with stuff like freezing trap to make sure that it stays ahead on board and then curves into stuff like Savannah High Man. Yeah, and we see a snake trap in Jab's hand, something that's becoming a little popular, especially here in HPL lately. Yeah, double Leper Gnome start here from Tides of Time, by the way. I would love to see the numbers on how often you win if you play two Leper Gnomes on turn one. That is a, I mean, that is a devastating start. Haunted Creeper going to be able to give uh, Jab some advantage here in terms of cards in the long run, but Tides, no shortage of action here. Mad Scientist added to this, and now the damage is going to come crashing in. If Jab does not get control of this board, Quickly and early, this can easily snowball out of control. Yeah, this is already snowballing out of control. Now, Misha, that was a pretty good one here. It's going to help protect his life total and protect this board. Uh, Tides is going to have to run both his minions into it to get it out of the way here. Does have Abusive Sergeant available to him as well if he wants to use that. Uh, you know, could potentially unleash the Hounds here as well. I like the Abusive Sergeant. Make sure he gets, you know, continues to get threats on board, continues to push damage. Those are all very important things. When you're ahead in this matchup, uh, kind of the more you hit that hero power, the closer you get to winning. Funny how that works. Yeah, it's also interesting to see that he does it with the, uh, he doesn't use the Mad Scientist there to trade off, so you have to believe that he probably has something only like Freezing Trap in his deck, because this is not a board you want to have Freezing Trap against. Yeah, I have to totally agree with that read as well. Uh, the other thing it does too is it keeps two health on the board instead of keeping one health on the board, so it fuzz force your opponent into a position. But they can't trade quite as easily as before, and now Snake Trap, this is the position where Tides could potentially be thrown for a loop here. Uh, he's going to have to figure out whether or not he thinks this is Explosive Trap, whether it's Freezing, whether it's Snake Trap. All these things are going to come into his head and figure out how he should, you know, dictate playing this turn moving forward. Yeah, I, I like this little move by Jab here because a lot of times you'll find in these matchups with Hunter on Hunter, when someone plays a trap and then has a Mad Scientist in play, the other player will immediately try oh, to kill. Oh, and look yeah. at that. He goes for the minion. You know, Jab very known to play Freezing Trap. Uh, in these mid-range strategies, and Tide's getting a little bit thrown off here. Now, the caveat to this is that Tide's has a big damage lead at this point, so Jab has got to figure out a way to get complete control of this board and then make a way to push forward afterwards. Yeah. Something like Misha could really help him do that, Alpha an Animal Companion, but it looks like he's starting to put together situations where maybe he can get Assault of his own. Yeah, this Unleash the Hounds is going to be great. He's going to let him uh, trade off uh, for the Abusive Sergeant and the Hound on the other side. He can do whatever he wants with the Mad Size. I don't know if he wants to leave it on board or take care of that secret now, but he gets to do a Hero Power this turn as well, and then his next turn is going to be a very good one. He's going to have a lot of minions left over and be able to cast an Animal Companion, but he doesn't know that there's a Lothab looming in Tide of Time's hand. Yeah, so right out here you see, you know, he thinks it's, it's, it's Freezing Trap. That was the read that he got. Excellent play from him. And at this point, you know, the damage has been now stifled from Tides of Time, but he got 17 points of damage in, kind of getting up to this point. So it, if Jab can keep control of the board here, he's got a very good chance to win this game. But just like you said, Lothab is going to keep him from, you know, really developing this board presence. Savannah wow, Highmane added to the Savannah hand. Savannah draw, but, that is huge. I mean, is this a freezing trap that's down for Jab right now? He draws his own Savannah Highmane. That is a huge draw at this point. I mean, he doesn't have a way to check this this low step anyway without taking five damage here, unless this is a freezing trap. So this is a very critical turn here for Tides of Time now. It oh, he like finds out it is so freezing trap too. Yeah, this is a big, big turn for Jab here. He's going to turn around the offensive, and he's going to be able to start. Ooh, wow, Hunter's, Hunter's Mark, Mark, Mark gets picked up. I mean, he's got a ton of options here and see how to move forward. Going to Animal Companion first, find out which one he picks up, it looks like, and then evaluate his game plan afterwards. There's a lot of really good ones here. Wow. Misha, not a terrible one at all. It's going to be able to help protect his life total here over the next couple turns and allow him to really, really race here. Yeah, the question now is how much does he invest in actually killing minions? Tide's going to scoop it up. He doesn't even want to play the game out anymore, just concedes. Doesn't even try to draw 
the right cards in that situation. I mean, I have unless there's just actually nothing in the deck that can save Tides of Time from, from there. I mean, like what like what what's going on with the concede in that position? I mean, obviously Jab has now turned this into a winning situation on board, but we've seen that turn around a number of times. Yeah, we've definitely seen some some games where we've had a player where we're like, this player is so far ahead on turn six that it looks really good, and they've lost on turn ten. Very surprisingly, sometimes you just draw perfect cards. It baffles me why he conceded there because he wasn't actually dead on board yet, and you have some draws in your deck that I mean, in your deck that might get you back in this game. Yeah, I really, really. I mean, I mean, even if it's only like a two percent chance to win, I mean, a two two percent chance more than you have if you concede. I just, wow. I mean, so early there, I did not expect that at all. But jab. Able to turn the early pressure around, really fine to put himself in a position to pick up this match. And when he had kind of thrown Tides off and gone with these other strategies, Tides was like, you know what, I'm just going to play Hunter. I don't know exactly what Jab's going to do. Jab went to his bread and butter, which is Hunter. And in that mirror match, I have to believe he's got an edge over almost any opponent in the world. Yeah, if you, if you believe that he has an edge, you can go to pvplive.net and look at his deck breakdowns and his strategies. You can find out how it is that he gets those edges in those mirror matches. And you know what? We can ask him ourselves here in just a minute. When we come back from break, we're going to talk to Jab. We're going to have a little bit of, a, of an interview with him. I'm really excited to ask him about how it feels to get in the winner's circle. You know, what, what made you bring these decks here this week? What soul searching you did? What, what you found? And you know what? It brought him a win here today. Yeah, when we come back, we're going to have that interview with Jab, find out exactly what his game plan was moving into this match and how elated he is to get that W on the board. Don't go anywhere, guys. That interview is coming up with Jab. You're watching Hearthstone on PvP Live.